Hello everyone, my name is Thomas Oyode, your online cat case. Yes, you can call me that. From our previous post, we already told you what um, this is all about. We are proposing to have the cat kissing class right on your palm, in the device that you're holding or having in your pocket, wherever you go to. Last post, we also talked about the difference between the Church of Christ and the Catholic Church. And while we were doing that, we said it's a part one because the part two, we also take a look at um, a related argument, a related teaching, which has to do with uh, the hope of salvation for those who die outside the Catholic Church. And that is what we're looking at today. I would think that the phrase is a very popular one, well known by many, especially Catholics, that says, is a Latin phrase, extra ecclesia nulla salus. Now, that particular phrase is traceable back to St. Cyprian of Carthage, who in 256 AD, just about the time after the Council of um, Carthage, wrote to Pope Stephen in his episode 72, episode 72, to argue that those who were baptized in the Catholic Church but later left, if they were to be readmitted into the Catholic Church, they needed to be re-baptized. You, you would want to be shocked. You will find it shocking. Many Catholics know that baptism is one sacrament that is not repeatable. And uh, Pope Stephen wasn't going to change the tradition. And so he didn't... Um, he didn't go with the idea or the proposal of St. Cyprian of Carthage. But it is said that in that letter, St. Cyprian of Carthage wrote, Salus extra ecclesiam non est. Salvation outside the church is not. Uh, but literally, what it means is that outside the church, there is no salvation. Now, this teaching is actually said to have been proposed implicitly by St. Irenaeus even before St. Cyprian who said that the church is the only door of salvation for the world. Later, Origen will come to propose this same teaching and say that let no one deceive himself. Outside this house, that is the church, there is no salvation. Let no one deceive himself. Outside this house, that is the church, there is no salvation. Now, St. Augustine, in the medieval period, actually diffused, I will use the word, this particular teaching in the sense that the common phrase that is well known to many today, the one I cited first, that is extra ecclesiam nullam, extra ecclesiam nulla salus, is attributed specifically to St. Augustine. So note the difference. The one of extra ecclesiam nulla salus is from St. Augustine, while the one from Salus Extra, while the one that is Salus Extra Ecclesiam non est is St. Cyprian. For St. Augustine, you can find everything outside the church except salvation. I repeat, according to St. Augustine, you can find everything outside the church except salvation. For him, you can find Alleluia, you can find hymns. You can find praises and prayers, but you cannot find salvation. So this is how this teaching went on through the ages of the history of church history. But it was not proposed as an official magisterial teaching. It was not proposed as an official teaching of the Catholic Church. As a matter of fact, up to the time of the Second Vatican Council that was held between 1962 and 1965, this aim doctrine, so to say, the teaching it was widely heard by many in the church. But when the Second Vatican Council came, specifically in Lumen Gesum number 14, in our last time I said that the Lumen Gesum is a document of the Second Vatican Council on the church. I'm repeating it. And said that, yes, the church is the one act of salvation for all. I'm not quoting. 
the church is the necessary means of salvation for all men. However, those who through no fault of their own, following the guidance of divine grace, following the dictates of their conscience, do the will of God, may find salvation through means known to God alone. Specifically in number 16 of the same Lumen Gentium, Council Fathers went on to say that it should be noted that those who actually try to find their salvation outside the church are in more danger not to attain it. Put in another word, it should be easier and safer to find salvation by remaining in the Catholic Church that was founded by Jesus Christ himself. It will be of more danger, one will be more exposed to the danger of not being able to attain salvation if one stays outside the Catholic Church. Therefore, summarily speaking, summarily speaking, the Church is the ark of salvation for everyone. Now, let us give a practical example as we would usually do. Before the coming of Christianity, our forefathers had a way of searching for the divine being and relating with the being. And most of them did this out of good conscience. They lived their lives in good conscience, doing what is good, the simple rule of life, do what is good, avoid what is evil. If these persons were never, they didn't ever have the opportunity of receiving the gospel, but they followed the details of good conscience to do what is good and to do the will of God. What the Catholic Church is teaching is that they cannot simply because they are not members of the Catholic Church not make it to heaven. Jesus, God is not going to say because you are not a Catholic, in spite of all the good things you have done, in spite of the fact that you lived a good life, you cannot enter into heaven. That is what the Second Vatican Council is teaching. So yes, while the Church is the commonest means, ordinary means of universal salvation, ordinary and universal means of salvation for everyone, yet if people follow their good conscience to seek the will of God and to do it and without no fault of their own, they've not heard the gospel of, they didn't hear the gospel and rejected the gospel, they would find eternal life from God himself. It is not the same thing as those who yet, yes, they are following their own conscience, but you preach the word of God to them, you bring Jesus Christ to them and they reject him. It is not the same thing. So dear friends, we hope we have been able to make these decisions clear enough. If there are questions, let us have them in your comment box. We will look through them. If there are issues you want us to treat, please let us know and we will take them up. Now, I have a question. Why do we say that baptism is not repeatable? Why is baptism not repeatable? God bless you. Do have a great time. And don't forget to subscribe, to share, and to like. Thank you.